everyone. How are you guys doing today? Welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter with Glory Hound and... Dr. Glory Hog. That's right. We don't have Greg Dixon here today because Greg... Is is fail sauce. Who has it's to make fail sauce. money for his I know, family. like he has to go and make money, which. It's not Dang it, Greg! Why do you have to make so much money all the time? <laughs> you know. So just saying hi. Let's see who we have in chat so today. So Robert says that since the time change, that's the downside oh, about yeah. being in Arizona. Like we have it very easy. Yeah. But everybody else has to do all the time change stuff, and it's really annoying. I for completely them. forgot about the time and change. We're just I didn't like, even whatever. think about it. I didn't even think about what it. But else? you're right. That day just passes in Arizona, and nobody no nobody notices. Yeah. Nothing happens. There's no news about <laughs> it. Nothing. <laughs> but super excitingly, we have Facebook comments as well as YouTube comments, I believe, showing up in chat today. So hopefully everybody will be able to see everybody's comments and talk with each other. I'm super exci excited about that. Yes, lots of testing on Facebook, nice. especially since they're going to the... Our TMPS stuff and everything. That's why we couldn't. They keep making changes, basically. I know. Facebook is such a pain in the butt. Greg isn't dedicated enough. He's not. <laughs> you should cut him from the team. If this was a sports team, he'd be cut. Oh, uh, Greg does his own show, too. So he's, like, doubled up most of the time. So I don't want to hear it. Well, I want to know what you guys are most excited about to hear about today in the comments because Pirates we Perry. have a, I feel like we have a decent list of games today with Bloodborne, Kingswood, Rusty well, Industry, and Complexity. What's surprising is like two of them are not funded. That's true. I was really surprised, especially by Complexity because yeah. I think that there's some really great uh, designers and stuff behind that. And it looked really, really interesting with the pieces that they're offering and everything. Oh, yeah, that's right. Alan will be in Flagstaff next Friday. Aww. Well, like... You have to eat some tacos. I wish that we were going up to Flagstaff. We could have said hi and stuff. But it's a pretty far drive on a Friday for us. L but let us know how yeah. long you're going to be there. That would be awesome. Play some games. All right, let's get started, guys. <laughs> First up, we have Bloodborne. This is by Cool Mini or Not Games. It's for one to four players. It's going to last about 60 to 90 minutes. I am super excited about this project. Let's see here. What's on the back of this shirt? I don't know. No, what's my on the back. shirt. Oh, that shirt? The, the sloth Goonies on the back. Shirt? That would be pretty oh. sweet, but it's just, <laughs> it's just Goonies never say die. So there's been so many people that have been entering this board game slash video game market here. Right. And it's mostly been video game industry people going over to board games, which I don't really feel like is the best match because it takes a different set of techniques going from video game industry into the board game industry. Well, it's much easier to port a tabletop into a video game, I think, because you're just making a digital copy. Right. Right. That's what all of stream is, basically. Well, or I Steam, love, though, that stream. we have a board game company that is well known for doing excellent board games and that they're theming this uh, with a video game. Yeah. I feel like that's a far better match for this like genre that, that they might have be going why it's on. 2000 percent funded. Yeah. Oh my gosh, how much money are they making on this? It's, it's probably over two crazy. million. Crazy. It's over 2 mil when I last oh looked at it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, two and a half mil. How many more days? 11 days. What do you think they'll get up to like 3 million for this? Probably. You think so? Yeah. Like it's Bloodborne. So this one is weird because like I never really played the Bloodborne game, but I know it's a, like I've heard of like a lot of really good things about it. I've heard it's really hard. It's real thematic and stuff. I just don't play as many video games as I used to ever since the kid was born. Um, so like I just missed this one So I never played Bloodborne, but it is on my short list of games I do want to play. Um, Easily but so three million, yeah. <laughs> but it's not like something that I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have to, because I'm not a fan of Bloodborne yet. So like, I think what they did here too, they like Cool Mini or not, did such a great job on this campaign, guys, because they made the mechanics in this actually quite light, because it's a deck building game. You know, and you don't have a whole bunch of stuff that you're controlling on your board here. You're you're controlling a couple different aspects that you might have. And then, you know, you're collecting cards for your deck and everything. So I really feel like this is just like the perfect, you know, integration of ha bringing over video game players to the board game industry and introducing them to possibly like a gateway game that is themed in something that they love. This is my favorite part. It's like, help them give it over the finish line. 1,200% <laughs> backed. 
And then, of course, like any cool mini or not campaign, they're offering like a gajillion different minis. Eighty dollars worth of add-ons. I know, right? You can get two forty-dollar add-ons. That's how they do it. Any cool mini fair. or not campaign. I mean, you're going to be spending close to like two hundred. Well, people plus complain about there. that, but like to a certain degree, like, but people also buy it. So why would they stop? If it's something that you really like, like, why not? Well, I mean, we, we can't say anything. We went all in on Arcadia <laughs> Quest and Massive <laughs> Darkness. So we are like, so in on those. So we went, like, super deep on those. So we can't really be like, oh, why would you do that? Because we dropped some money. And I think really the way that they have it scheduled on the side here where it's like $100 for the base game and then adding the stuff you want. They really have this down to a science at this point. Like, they've run so many campaigns. They're like, all right, w this is what the backers want. This, you know, yeah. they have the add-ons if available. They have a base prize. It's very simple options here. They get a ton of extra miniatures. Yeah, there's been a ton of projects, Alan, this month. It's just been insane as far as projects going. It's only the second or the third. It's only the third, <laughs> Alan. You're already tapped out. Well, from last month. From no, last he month. Says it's this been month. crazy. Alan's tapped out for this <laughs> month. Wormwood hit him hard when he backed Ooh, it. Ooh, yeah, that's true. Well, that's true. <laughs> but, I mean, I haven't played Bloodborne in forever, the video game. Oh, so you played Bloodborne? Yeah, I played the first one, or maybe I'm thinking of something else. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. You're thinking of Blood Rain, the vampire one? Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe it's Blood Rain. The one Rain that was like that ended up being a movie of. and stuff? Yeah, I know yeah. we played Blood Rain at one point, but that was like PlayStation 2 or something at that point. Blood, oh, Blood, yeah, that's this true. Is, this is PlayStation 4. I don't think you've played I this. I thought one. it was in the same universe. Never mind. Just no. kidding. I haven't played this one. She saw the word blood and got just Ooh, all dizzy. Well, Blood Rain was so good. That was a good video game. I still play video games. I love. Man, I... She'll play old video games where I, I really don't. Yeah, like, oh, sadly Vincent. for my wallet, I am backing this. Ooh, you're... So I yeah. would say Dungeonology, you know, Dungeonology, Kingdom, Kingdom Rush, Rush, On Mars, Mars, and those are all fantastic Which, Yeah, I mean, we backed, we backed like, two of those, too, so we should feel that pinch, but and I try not to look. One of those things, like, I want to back... I would have backed Dungeonology, too, if I had the funds to do it. Like, there's so many good Kickstarters are out. Man, this is tough. So the only thing for me on this is not being a super huge fan of the IP. Yeah. So like that doesn't have any draw for me. Mm -hmm. And already being so deep into two other really big cool mini or not games, I don't feel a super need to like I gotta rush in and get this one. Because we've got, you know, we've got Blood Rage, we've got um what's the other one? The uh, Rising Sun. We've got I mean we've got we've got the the tabletop game of of uh Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. You know, Game of Thrones uh, miniature game. I mean, we've got a lot of cool mini or not titles. I love all their titles and I always like we passed on the others and I kind of always regretted that and I kind of I still almost always want to buy it whenever I see it. I'm like, "Ooh, I should get that." Yeah. But I I think for me this one's a pass just simply because of the price point uh, and not being a huge fan of the IP, not like it's not something that I need to have. Who do you guys think are mostly backing this? Do you think that video game players are mostly backing this or I think it's board a good game? Mix. I think you got Cool Media not already has their fan base like right. already because their games are objectively good. Like their games are really good. If I if yeah. I had the if I just had a hundred bucks kicking around, I mean I'm sure I would really enjoy this game. Yeah. And if you're gonna do it, there's no reason to wait for retail because you're gonna get so much more yeah. by doing it on Kickstarter. This is one of the things that like. I mean, you for these cool money or not Kickstarter games, you never really want to wait for retail because you just get so much more yeah. stuff, like a ridiculous amount of extra stuff that it if doesn't you're make buy it worth it. it. Like you should get it here. Yeah, definitely. and then you always get all sad, like if you have to get the retail edition. Yeah, because you're missing like, on these like, like that giant spider. All these right different there. characters and stuff. Like that that's the with biggest the hat. thing. Everybody needs a person with a hat. Right, that's Ludwig. Ludwig. Very very <laughs> dapper hat. You need that hat person. There's whatever those things are. That's weird, but you as can get always, some of those. As always, they do amazing jobs on their miniatures. Really, I have. I don't know what the f that is, but you need <laughs> some of those. Like, <laughs> if you're gonna play the game, right? You probably know. I rarely have anything. Oh wow. Bad to say about so somebody saying that 13 percent are first-time backers. That's. But I mean, if it's a big enough IP, it'll bring people in. I mean, okay. think about Ninja Turtles or Her even like Harry Potter Munchkin. That was one of the most successful live unboxings you did was the Harry Potter Munchkin and it was a bunch of people that don't really play Munchkin. It was really a bunch of people Munchkin. that didn't play board games that were on that stream and it yeah. was crazy because I was answering a bunch of those sort of questions. Just backed the new Hostage Negotiator yeah, that expansion. expansion is out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many good things out. 
and the way we do this, like we're always kind of like almost like a week behind or a couple days behind yeah. because we have to actually have everything put together bef- like a, before this show, obviously. So like I already see new stuff popping up that I'm like, yeah, what's like this? you already see next week's games and you're like, oh, we're going to have yeah. to make tough decisions between everything. I think that if I was involved in the Bloodborne IP as well, this would be a 100 percent win for me because it's cool. Mini or not game. You're going to get a fantastic game. You're going to get amazing. So many minis miniatures. For the price. Yeah, you I mean, you're going to get great scenario based expansions in this like like I said, there's nothing bad to say about this. I did want to scroll down here, though, to the very bottom of this, which I thought was really interesting, that Cool Mini or Not, like I said, they have this <laughs> down to a science with all of this. You see what Ryan said? All the video game players that couldn't beat the original game have to come Aww. buy this. They feel better. It's, it's, <laughs> it's considered. So sad. I've seen it on a lot of, like, because I still follow video <laughs> games, even though I don't have the chance to actually play oh, them all. It's but so it's, sad. it's on a lot of top ten lists of, like, hardest games to complete. Is it really? Yeah. That's funny. It was pu- it's considered punishing. People say, like, oh, you like to punish yourself? You're a little bit of a masochist. You should play Bloodborne. So, so did you guys go to the end of this campaign and see all of, like, the legal lingo that they have on this? It's mm. like this campaign, like, goes on forever here. I'm sorry. It's like scroll, scroll, We got to do slow scroll. scrolls so you guys don't, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, I don't want to, like, in the hurt shock. you guys. But I thought it was really interesting how they have a – ton of legal lingo at the bottom well is bloodborne of this. actually owned by the playstation because you know by the by ps4 by sony? i believe so because if it's owned it's by sony, sony there's going to be a ton of legalese because well, sony's no, no, such I'm a big like if you look at the bottom of the thing it's strictly about kickstarter stuff like hey if we go ahead and sell the base game before the game with all the kickstarter stuff comes out that's okay like i mean there's like a ton of stuff about where they're shipping to 10 to 20 and more states yeah and like i just i started reading through there and i was like wow when did they add so much legal extra stuff to the bottom of this which isn't bad but it really it's really interesting how they're trying to like nip that in the bud yeah with i don't know with maybe kickstarter complaints or something or did they put this legal info up here specifically because of other stuff that's going on on kickstarter like i don't know can we have derek pronounce bloodborne name segment <laughs> oh man oh that would, be that would be fantastic i love that especially since i haven't <laughs> played it it would be all fresh yeah so they have their refund policy on here that they're talking about all sorts of terms and conditions that they're talking about we know like, you guys come here to read about terms and conditions that, well i just thought it was really interesting they really i'm not sure why they have so much legal lingo at the bottom of this I don't know. Like, is it because it's Sony based? Is it because this is a lot? Look at, I'm still scrolling on there, guys. Like, no, I idea. don't know. I don't know. I just thought I it was interesting. That's the first because I like to be surprised. Well, that's the first time I've seen such a lengthy form of that at the bottom. I don't know. Okay, sorry, sorry, I got distracted, guys. All right, Doctor Glory Hog, would you back that? You don't like no. the IP? No, you're not going to back that. No, it's that. not that I don't <laughs> like the IP. I, it's an <laughs> unknown IP to me. So. If we didn't already have another Cool Mini or Not game uh, oh. just collecting dust unplayed, then yeah. I would definitely think about it. For 100 bucks, if you even like casually like the IP, I think it's definitely a I really good I think so, too. Buy. And I think that it's going to be great for those people that are new to board games as well because it is a deck building sort of game. So well, and if you just also, if your collection is not filled with these, we actually have quite a few of these types of games like Gloomhaven and stuff that are big campaign-based games that we just haven't gone through yet. So it seems ridiculous to add another one i'd back this though i would totally back this yeah i know you would i would <laughs> it looks amazing <laughs> it and i look love really the horror cool. theme and i love how you know all you go into the dream stuff. world and stuff and like that's where you buy all your stuff and everything they did a really great job with this, this. just makes me want to go buy the video game though yeah it does make me want to buy the video game as well it. yeah that's true i i expect to see more like video game matchings from them honestly like in the future, I feel like this is their introductory thing, and that they're gonna go like super gangbusters with this because they, they did could. the Munchkin thing, yeah, which was okay pairing board game companies with them, and I think they did another pairing of a board game company too, right? I can't remember. And then doing the past, yeah. this with video games and stuff like that. I don't know. They're doing they're doing an amazing job. They're changing things. They're doing a good job. 
All right, we're moving on. Moving on to Kingswood. We have Kingswood by 25th Century Games. This is for one to five players. It'll last 15 to 30 minutes. The starting price for this is $25. So if Greg was here, we could be like, oh, oh it's within your price range. Oh. <laughs> This has a Rondel Gaming uh, action Rondel. selection. Yes, where you're going that around. Was my and this in high school. is the most interesting thing I think that is about this game is this Rondel selection here, where you're going to be on a location and then on your turn you're going to move and then take the action of the location that you move to. If you want to skip locations in that circle, you have to pay extra money, but nobody can land on those locations. So right. If you know somebody wants to go to another location, look at she's already trying to make it. You can like always go ahead and stomp on that location, pay to go to that location first, right? Wow. <laughs> well, I love it whenever they you can mix like so cool. really sneaky like ways to mess mess with other players because it seems like oh okay nobody can be on the same location like less interaction, but no, that's quite the opposite. It's like. Sneaky, awesome interaction. <laughs> she likes <No>. to block. <laughs> block. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Ellen She's says like Kingswood looks cool. I like the Rondel worker placement mix, and it's bargain compared to the others. She's no got kid. a little bit of Gandalf no blood in her. She's like, you, <laughs> you shall sh not pass. <laughs> it's like, calm down. It's just supposed to be a lighthearted game. Well, I'm super pumped for this game, though. I think Me it's, too. It's, it's supposed to be a little bit lighter game, like a family weight game. Yes. But... You know, as our daughter's eight now, and uh, she, I mean, she'll play anything we play. Yeah. But I want something that it looks visually appealing. It looks like it's going to be light enough that it's fun, easy to take out, easy to teach, easy to play, and will just be enjoyable and not like just a slog through a bunch of rules. And we'll wait, hold on, let me look this up or let me do this. So, yeah, I'm 100% on this one. And then the price is cheap. And I like these types of games. This reminds me a little bit of like Everdale where you're like, if I get this card, it lets me do this, which lets me do this. And it, you kind of get like a little bit of almost like an engine going. Or yeah. And there's something to be said about this like lighter style weight of games because they're great to play with people who haven't played board games before. So perfect for gateway games. And then although our kid plays all of the board games with us, this is something that I would like send her out into the world and be like go teach this to your friends because that's around like she could teach that probably to right. other people and well, then I that would be fine because you know? I like to think of games in terms of food because I'm a fat man <laughs> so you get like <laughs> your Two you, get your, you get your <laughs> turkey <laughs> dinner game right which is like a gloomhaven which is gonna be your, like your all-night game right this is like a nice dessert or a nice side dish where you're like Ah, it's like refreshing. It's like the mashed potatoes. You're like, well, this was good. I feel full and happy. I might come back to it again after we finish turkey dinner. Like, it's just refreshing. It's like a nice dessert, like a scoop of ice cream or something. You, you're going to feel good and happy after eating. Ew, no, 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 pistachio no. burritos. That's gross. Whoa. <laughs> yes, and Vince and I, I would, would totally back that. Burrito. I would totally back that ga last game. It looks amazing. You're going to have to tell me all about it whenever you play it. Yeah, I wouldn't be, like, upset if Bloodborne just showed up at our house. Yeah, but that would be amazing, But right? I don't want to write the check for it. I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, you did that? Dang it, I'm mad. And then not really be mad. Yeah, my meanness is always super planned in advance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they I don't want to tell you about Dead of Winter. Well, well, that's Dead a winter, story for another day. That's a story I for another day. I feel like it was yesterday. It was a balmy 38 <laughs> degrees. This that's a lie. Kingswood has amazing art in it. It has super adorable locations. Like one of these locations, I believe, is like a little gaming tavern and stuff. So the theme is just fantastic with it. You're still going out and fighting those monsters. You're doing a little bit of set collection with the tokens you and stuff. You get the wooden meeples, too, with like the cheap version. And then if you go with the deluxe, you get, you like, get like coins, coins and, and you get like uh, wooden cut out, like wood versions of like the hearts and the oh, swords. Oh, with the little tokens like, yeah, and so stuff I, here. For like 15 bucks different, I think that's pretty cool because no. coins are usually expensive. They did a really excellent job on this. Like, that's your promo coin. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with this Kickstarter campaign. I'm it glad it's seems, funded for sure. Yeah, it seems like it's a great like first time. This is the first time. No. Is it? No. No. 25th, 25th century. What else did games. they do? Space Explorers, I believe, off the top of my oh, head. Oh, okay, okay. So we reviewed some of their other that games. That makes sense. That makes sense. This looks amazing, though. Like, it yeah. looks really good. No, I'm excited about this yeah. one. This is one that I could see myself just walking through, like, a Game Depot and being like, oh, what's this? Picking it up and then Here, just the based game off parlor? of, like, yeah, just, like, looking at it and being like, oh, this is something I kind of want to get. And, like, just picking it up and buying it. 
especially for like 25 bucks. Ooh, Ellen, you went for deluxe. Went deluxe. Yeah, you went, you went for deluxe. deluxe because the deluxe is tasty looking. <laughs> like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> food and <laughs> that's right, <laughs> Kabuki Kid. We're gonna we're gonna relate food to all board games now. I mean, what did they food what did, and what did board Kabuki games? Kids say food what? Analogies. Did I analogies? not say it right? analogies? I think <laughs> analogies? I got you on that one. Food analogies. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed because she stopped. And she skipped over. She's I'm like, like, hold she's on. Like, food at them. Mm. Um. <laughs> oh no, they're gonna catch me slipping. Well, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. For 15 bucks, so I could see going deluxe on this one because you get 30 coins. You're gonna get a bunch of wood upgraded pieces. I think that alone, and the, some of the stretch goals look pretty cool. So plastic I'm excited for it. Mold inserts, guys. We gotta get those plastic mold inserts. Yeah. Stat. We okay. gotta get it there. We gotta get there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna back this for sure. Yeah. It's twenty five bucks. Yeah, this is actually it's the one I was most excited about because like I wanna be super excited about Bloodborne, but without knowing the IP, I'm trying to like limit how much I look at it because I almost jumped in on Cthulhu May Die. Uh Death May Di- Death Must Death May Die Cthulhu, the one with the big Cthulhu bus. Yeah, that one? yeah. Like I was excited about that one too, but it's like all right, calm down. We have too many of these really big games that we don't play enough of. I'm trying to stick to these middle, these middle games, the ones that I'm going to be able to get out and get out to the table within a week of getting it versus the ones that sit on my shelf for like a year well while I just stare at it longingly. Right, and these are easier to get to the table, as Greg would say, because you have something that takes 15 to 30 minutes. You can mm-hmm. play it while you're waiting for people to show up to your game day, basically. And this is one that I feel like will be fun enough that I could just end up playing it with my kid while you're busy or like, you know, like it's just... It's got simple mechanics that... I'll be excited to show to people. That can evolve into a little bit more strategic game with that Rondel. I'm game. sure you'll shut yeah. people down. That's right. As long as you can shut people down, I'm always happy. Oh. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, I'm going to say I'd back this one as well. This Actually, is like yeah, one we're trip to totally Chipotle back this. for a family of three. I mean... One trip. That's not even We could cut much. out one trip to Chipotle for that. <laughs> no, we don't cut it out. We just go. <laughs> oh, okay. You go we and have a bring the game. Night. We get the game and we get oh, Chipotle. Oh, okay. $50. All right. That makes sense. <laughs> what else? Is there anything else cool that I didn't mention about this game? I don't think so. I don't know. It looks good. Like I said, I'm it's all one in. To f- what is it? One to five? Did they have solo gaming? Yeah, they got uh, solo gaming yeah. on it. So one to five on that. Yeah, because with the solo game, it's your guild versus the monsters in the forest, and you add a new monster each round no matter what. And if you ever let it get to three or more monsters, don't quote me, but I think it's at least three monsters, then you lose. Okay. So then it becomes more like a survival thing where you've got to take out a monster each round. You have to keep, round. like, continuously trying to take yeah. out monsters if you to don't, keep them down. Done. Yeah. Skip the queso that night. <laughs> yeah, we're not paying extra <laughs> Yeah, for we're queso. not doing that. <laughs> We get our avocado for Vincent's free. Vincent's going to go in for the deluxe. Yes. Those coins. Like It's Vincent. the coins that get me on stuff. Yeah. Because those coins are usually 25 bucks if to you buy start them on with. Your own, if you buy yeah. them on your own, like, yeah. if you can get them in the game for less money, it's always good to do that. Because you can use coins for anything. Y- we've used the scythe coins for other games and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can use them for anything. If anyone has any clue of what I'm even talking about, which one? Oh, Kong. Penfold from Danger Mouse. Did you ever watch oh, Danger Mouse? Oh, that's right. The that's right. I did. That was a long time ago. I it was a. Uh, oh no, wait. No, I'm thinking of the other one with gadgets. You're thinking about Mighty Mouse. Ma- no, you're thinking about Rescue Rangers. Rescue now. Rangers. Yeah. Rescue Rangers was '90s. I think Danger Mouse is. That's a little bit older. Yeah. Well, you're, are you thinking about Mighty Mouse with the little ring that he takes the little pill no, out of? Because no. that's Mighty he Mouse. He had the car in the intro, Danger right? Mouse? Probably. I think Danger Mouse had the car in the intro where he drove off and stuff. I was I a Darkwing know. Duck guy. I didn't watch Danger <laughs> Mouse. I missed it for whatever reason. <laughs> All right. So we're back in this one for sure. What do we have next? We have Rusty, Rusty Industries Industry. by Yodeling Ogre Games. Just industry. Oh. It's not multiples. It's just industry. The one industry. But you you are creating different industries. But that's no, not No, I guess you're, it's one market. No, it's a different industry. I don't know. Is it? <laughs> By Yodeling Ogre Games, this is for three to four players, 60 what to 90 yodeling minutes. Yodeling Ogre sound like? Yodele, yodele, yodele. Ogre. I didn't Shrek do that. Oh. Like Shrek, I'm pretty sure like there's a clip of Shrek somewhere. Yodeling? I think you're right. Or was that Donkey? Somebody yeah. Somebody yodeled in Shrek. So Please post us gifts of... <laughs> <laughs> or gifs of with this one here yeah yodeling. it isn't funded 
Which I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it's I'm fairly I'm surprised, too, because usually market games go pretty fast. But here's why I think it isn't funded. Is it the three to four players? No. Because I'm trying to steal your thunder here. Because for me, that's the thing that stood out the most. You have to play it with three or four players. And that doesn't leave... Well, with a marketing game, you kind of have to have more than two I, people. I get that. But even like three to six, or like you have no room. It's like we either have three people so either we invite over an extra person or two extra people and maybe they were it. planning on doing a fifth player stretch goal and they're just not getting there at this point that would be awkward they should just add it in then if that was the case that was a really big pledge goal for them for that so? thirty thousand. well if you look at kingswood kingswood i think was like in that five thousand range or something Hmm. Here's what I think is happening with this campaign, guys. They're I putting up too big of a goal and then... don't think they did enough research because, one, they don't have a bunch of reviewers and stuff on this and any sort of, like, Which you don't have to have a marketing. bunch, but you should have, like, at least two. Yeah, you should have at least two reviewers that have reviewed it and done some marketing for it you It wasn't in stuff. any of the tabletop groups that we're a part of. Yeah. Like, I didn't see any pre-marketing No, I haven't seen it. anything now, for I'm sure there were some, like, maybe at a convention or something, but I didn't see anything about where well, Kingswood... I knew Kingswood was going to come out before it was out. Like, I already knew Kingswood was already on my radar of, like, I've seen this. Right. I've seen the creator talking about it. You know, I've seen 25th Century Games talking about it. I've seen it on banners. I've seen it. Like, so when it came out, I was like, oh, there's Kingswood. And it instantly went onto the list of something to look deeper into. Yeah. But Rusty Industry was like, okay, I had to, like, look at it and be like, is this something we should add to the list? Is it something that she should research further? Like, you know, it was a little, a little bit harder. The campaign looks lovely, okay, as far as what they've done with it and everything. I like the fact that it's a marketing game that the they boast you can talk in – or boast that you can teach in – like five minutes or something like that, which is always good, especially whenever you're introducing people to market games. But, yeah, I really think that they just, I mean, planning these Kickstarters out, you put so much into it. I mean, that's probably at least a year and a half worth of work and getting the game out, getting a prototype in hand, because, like, did they not give them to reviewers because they don't have any prototypes? Like. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it, and if you haven't planned that out. Kickstarter's too cutthroat now. You can't just roll up into right. it and just be like, hey, here's my game. Help me fund it. Like, you have to be prepared now. There's too many other big things. They're talking about yodeling goats, puppets. Oh. I see well, you looking like, what? Yeah, no market interaction. He's talking about Ruby Roundup, now. though. He's talking about another game. Yeah. They didn't fund. So Kickstarter's too competitive, especially in, like, that like that 30 to 60-ish dollar range. It seems like $100 games do well because they have a lot of minis. Yeah. And like the 15 10 you know, the $20 or less card games do really well because it's an easy buy. But if you're in that middle market, there's a lot of, you're, you're fighting. And so you have to, you have to make yourself stand out. And so you have to have like some, at least some, at least a review of somebody who's like, here, I've played it. This is what it looks like. Something because you can't, it's hard to find out information about this one. Like yeah, it is much harder to find out information on this and one. You can scroll through it and read it, but not everyone's going to take the time to do that. Did is, did they do tabletop sim with this one? Um, I don't think so. I don't remember seeing tabletop sim. If they so. didn't, this is a perfect game to have done on tabletop sim. I mean, where you introduce people to those things. They did everything right except for the marketing in this, really, guys. Like, So they get a participation star. And they do get it. a participation star, <laughs> but that's it. One star. <laughs> One for star for this. It does look like an interesting game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, d I just don't know. It's I mean, it's all based off supply and you know supply and demand, which is interesting. Thirty-eight dollars for this one. But I just think it without some extra, they didn't build up any steam, so yeah. to say, before they joined in. So like, it's hard. And then when you look at it, and you go, like, kind of like what Alan was saying. If you look at it, and you're like, oh, cool, it's like twenty percent back. You're like, right. uh, you don't get too invested in it because you don't <laughs> think it's going to happen. If anything, Daniel will be grabbing Chipotle for lunch, right? For real. <laughs> I mean, for real. We're, we're gonna have to get Chipotle to sponsor us. I'm actually, here. I'm actually making <laughs> onion rings right now, like on, on the side in the side room. I can smell them. Like I'm like, yeah, Dang. they're in the air fryer. Like that was messed up. up. That was messed up doing that while because, we're doing no, this. No, because I'm always hungry during the show <laughs> because I normally eat around this time. So now Ooh. when the show ends, I can just eat onion rings. So Daniel says he hates the box. The box is insanely busy and it's hard to see the. Le letters part. yeah and stuff so i agree the box is not great it doesn't do a good job of telling you what the game is about and it doesn't get you excited at all about the game like those are not exciting colors to put together they the colors go well together but they're not exciting at all that's fair 
the cards and stuff and everything is more exciting inside. Yeah, but the card art looked interesting enough. They should have had some of those people up on the front of it, I think. Yeah, they Would really missed more. their mark with their marketing here, though, because, like, I love all the little gifts that they have for everything and teaching it, but, yeah, it's and it, For I'm something super that's supposed sad. to be taught in five minutes, like, why isn't there more? Like, oh, Alan works. thinks the box looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just hard to read, Alan. That's what that's what I think. And if it doesn't catch my eye right away, like I probably would have walked past this game so, with oh, the so letters and the colors. So okay. I agree that like you have to have – if it's going to be on a retail shelf, you have to have that box stand out. Otherwise, people will just walk by it. Where Kingswood looked interesting right away. I'm like, oh, what's this? There's somebody. There's a forest. There's a giant crown. Kingswood makes me go, okay, so it's going to be something medieval or – fantasy base and if you already like that stuff you're gonna be more willing to pick it up and look at the back yeah this box doesn't make you want to pick it up and look at the back so i could see why why people might just walk by this one so it's going to struggle the deluxe stuff look ordinary it must have because i didn't even realize there was a deluxe yeah there version is a deluxe version i think it added um the, like is it screen printing? it's right here the, this, it's oh, right okay here. yeah so, it's like adding like like chunkier tokens and stuff mm -hmm. but they're just like the big wood like you can like those four um Time Story is really Time cool, stories, yeah. but that's but Time Stories is a very bland looking game for the most part. So like, I don't know if that's the I best know. thing to I, go Like after. I said, guys, this makes me really sad because this is something that is in a decent price range, and then having a market game that you can teach in five minutes is huge. You know, getting those people introduced to market style games, like you're always looking for those sort of games, you know, and sadly. I probably will not be backing this one here because, one, like Alan said before, you know, I don't think it's going to be funding. The $69 version does look – it doesn't make me want to buy the game anymore. You know, like, it's not exciting enough that I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I right. need to get this. Like, it doesn't do anything extra for me. And maybe – I said chunky thing, <laughs> chippy thing. Maybe they did have other – Chips and guac? Chipotle is my life. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe they had other things scheduled for their goals and stuff that they just didn't meet that just gave this campaign like nothing, like nothing got exciting during it. Like, yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, it's yeah. hard to compete with something like Bloodborne when when you didn't do pre-marketing to get people to like back. You don't have to fund day one. But the closer you are to funding that first 48 hours, the more people are willing to look at it because it seems serious. Yeah. And you go, oh, well, this many people already looked at it and backed it. Makes you go, oh, this seems like more of a safe bet. When you look at something that is 12% funded and it's got like 11 days left, you're like, oh, what's wrong with this one? What don't I know? And then you just pass and you move on to the next shiny thing because we're all animals in the end <laughs> and we like shiny things. I mean, I'm over and here. And out of Woo! the three games here that we've oh already mentioned God. today, I think I have more. This is – for the price and everything like that. I mean, because we just looked at Kingswood, which was $25, which seems like a steal for that game. Yeah. You no, know? Kingswood seems like a super great value. And then you have this one here, which probably has, I mean, this one probably has more components to it, but you're still doing cards and components and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, cards, like wood blocks, and, you know, little 38. cardboard tokens. So I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm going to have to pass on this one. Not because it doesn't seem like a great game, just because I don't know enough about it. Like, I was not given enough stuff on yeah, this Yeah, I'd one. have to definitely play this one before Maybe I Maybe I'll go it. play it on Tabletopia and see, you know? UK, UK games, games are expensive right now. That's why oh, I live okay. in the U.S. What? What? That I makes don't know sense. what that was. That makes sense. So you got, you got a little bit more pricing on that, a little bit. A little bit higher price. Okay. Well, because there's so much risk involved right now yeah. because they don't even know where they can ship, what they can ship, which companies are going to fold. It's a big it's a big deal. It's a big mess. It'd that be like, sucks. It'd be like if Texas just really like actually left <laughs> like the U.S. It'd be like, oh, well, what are we going to do about all of our stuff that goes through there? That's kind of a problem. Well. That's kind of what's happening in Europe right now. Yeah. It's crazy pants. All right. So moving on, we have Complex City. This is by Big Kid Games. It's for one to four players. It should last about 45 minutes. And it's got the sweetest theme music out of all of them because it's dun 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 Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's not Sunday yet, guys. Sunday's coming up. Episode 4 Game of Thrones. I'm surprised that this is not funded already, honestly. Yeah, this one looked really interesting, too. Like, I liked the little pieces that you got. You 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 know, it's a tile laying game. And if you get, like, if you can match up the right houses for the right tribes or the right species, you get, like, a bonus. And you can do, like, a lot of really cool things. It seems 
pretty cool. And the only thing I wish was different is for the deluxe, it comes with like like little cutout pieces. I want them to be squishy though, like you know, like Tidal Blades had the squishy fruit and stuff. Oh like, yeah. I wanted. I was like, oh, are those squishy? Like I don't know why I wanted them to be squishy. So Kabuki Kid says, so silly yeah. not to back something because it looks like it might not make it. That logic means that it surely won't fund. I totally agree with you. But that's reality. A lot of people will look at a campaign and because it's not funded, go, oh, man, this looks risky because not enough people know about it and it isn't funded and yeah. therefore I'm not backing it. So It's herd mentality. I mean, people still have it, even if you try to think that you're more enlightened and evol or evolved. If something looks like it's not going to succeed, you're not going to bet on somebody you think is going to lose. Well, and it's one of those things. Like if a campaign is not succeeding, I look at it harder. Cl yeah, more closely because I'm eye. like, why is this not succeeding? Like, is it by a publisher that people are having issues with? Have they had bad things in the past? Have they like not fully done something within the campaign to make it great or you know are they having commentary back and forth like i mean so we got some good comments here so vincent's saying he's got a long list of back but not funded and it's so sad to look at Aww. like an elephant's graveyard we <laughs> do too so there's a <laughs> lot of smaller ones that as we go through it and you see them and you're like oh i really wanted that game but it just didn't go and it is sad like it is kind of depressing you're like oh man i you know i I was all in on that game, and it didn't work. Yeah. And then what Daniel's saying is that this game looks really cool, but maybe some more time marketing. I agree because yeah. this is another one that just surprised me. Like, it sprung up. A lot of times now I can go to Kickstarter when we're looking for this week's Kickstarters, and, and I already, already know. have four or five that I'm looking for because I yeah. know they're going to be out. And I know a general idea of them because I've already seen spoilers ahead of time right. or preview pages or something. So I already know what to look for. This is one that I ran across. I was like, oh, this could be interesting, but I didn't know about it ahead of time. And that's always kind of a bad sign. Yeah, I would always say that usually whenever we're picking out Kickstarters, we do know at, at least a third of them usually that we're going to do for the next week. And then usually one or two sneak in there that – are like we just haven't heard anything right. about, you know, like the Rusty Industry one, which was a surprise. And I'm like, man, why aren't people backing this? So it, m it makes a huge difference doing all that marketing and getting out there on the different platforms and in the different groups and stuff and showing off your game and asking people for feedback and questions about your game super far ahead yeah. of time. And I do agree with Kabuki Kid. There's nothing – there's no harm in – in Backing something that doesn't fund, and we have a yeah. lot. Oh, absolutely. But the, 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 the game isn't compelling enough that I want to back it. Any, like, I still don't for think I would back industry. it. For Rusty Industry? Yeah, not for Rusty Industry. I, I, if I'm going to back one that's kind of riskier that hasn't already funded, it would be Complexity. I believe that. Because this is the one I'm – like, this is the other one that I'm interested industry, in. For Rusty Industry, I don't have enough information on the game, so I would be playing it on Tabletop Simulator first and then going from there with that game and seeing, okay, do I like this on tabletop sim? Yes, I, I do. I would back it. No, I don't. I wouldn't back it. But I don't have enough of that, those other gamers in the industry telling me what they think about the game or showing me the game or like, I don't have enough other information for it. So do you think calling the game Complex City for what it is, a tile laying game? Maybe. Theme disconnect. I think you could have had a cooler. I think Complex City sounds almost more like a Euro or something like or some kind of industry type game versus a tile laying game. I mean, like a lot of the really good tile laying games have like simple names like Kaiju Crush. And you're like, oh, my God, what is this thing? It's giant monsters. They're crushing each other like they've got like this has a cool theme. I don't know if I would have pushed the city aspect of it as much as I would have pushed like the alien species and trying to build like. This is like a district. Um, what is it? District nine, the movie where you, you're trying to like you know trying to have like aliens. Different, yeah, different yeah, like different entities alien come areas, together right. and stuff. It feels like yeah. so. I feel like if they would have pushed more of the alien theming, like there's aliens trying to come together. I don't know what a good name off the top of my head, but I agree mm -hmm. that complex isn't the name I would have used for it because it doesn't seem like it's actually a complex game. It seems like it's a fun game. That's interesting. So maybe missing the intended audience who would love a tile lane game and turned away from a complex game. Well, I mean, it. the theme for me actually made sense with complex city because I thought, okay, well, you're building complex little, like little complexes, you know, as you're putting stuff together and stuff because like 
those little lines in there and stuff are roots and everything, right? Like, that's how I interpreted the game whenever I was looking at it. Yeah, like, but I don't think it's an overly complex game. Yeah, most people who are looking at tile games aren't looking for something necessarily super complex. Hmm. You know? Because I, I can't think of that many tiling games that are like, oh, my God, this is a brain burner. It's more like, oh, okay, how do I play? It's more like, you know, how do I want to place this? Well, well, I'm trying to think of the different complex tiling games that I I've played because we just played Papillon and that was a tile lane game. But it's not and a but complex that's like game. Complex it's an easy teach. Right. Because you're having to figure out the tile lane. Right. It's easy to, t but it's easy to teach with a, a depth to it. Right. And so I think that's kind of, uh, that's what he's alluding to. I believe is that okay. maybe like not the right marketing for it. And you know, Daniel's a marketing that's guy. Random bits. Let's see here. Didn't see the organization or structure to it. I think that yeah, Papillon too soon. It Aww. Papillon, <laughs> Papillon. <laughs> it is. It's so sad. I want the game so bad. I'm gonna be so upset. <laughs> yeah, nitpicking it. It does. It looks good, but yeah, the pre marketing Well, because we're talking about why it didn't fund, and I think that's well, the reason yeah. why this one didn't fund. Because now I moved on. I'm not, I'm done talking about rusty industry. I yeah. think this one isn't funded yet because of that, but I'm still willing to put money towards this one. I would like to back this one Well, still. and I think it's important for – because I love talking to people about Kickstarters and whether you should back them or not, but I know that there are a lot of publishers also that watch our stuff, and it's great information for them as they're coming through and looking at this and going, oh, man, these people don't like this because of this. Well, I shouldn't do that in my com campaign, you know, which is huge because these are – I mean, we always come across little things like this that just need to be tweaked. Like, you have an awesome game here, but, like, just a few things need to be tweaked on this, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. They're not the best at fulfillment, really. Well, I wonder if that's, like, hitting them as well. Do they have, like, a little well. bit of a bad reputation? Because they might. I haven't heard it, but they could. I yeah, I hadn't heard about that either. Like, but a bad reputation about fulfillment will... Definitely kill a Kickstarter. Definitely, yeah, hurt your campaign. Because anybody that was wrong. interested before isn't. And then right. people that don't get their or games are always way more angry. vocal than people yeah. that do get their yeah. games. I think all the pieces look really cool and everything. I like the idea of having everything come together, and then you're trying to score points off of diplomatic uh, aliens and stuff mm -hmm. and using their different powers. Like, I love all of that. I love the look at the game. Complexity made sense to me, but I can see how there would be a disconnect with other people there. Oh, there's yodel, uh, nice. yodeling ogre games. Nice, yodeling ogre games. What did they say? Uh oh, we're gonna have to move back up here. They just saying that tabletop simulator yep. is almost ready. Almost ready. Okay, no that's, problem. That's fair. Like, yeah, if you you know what I've never guys, had a Kickstarter game, so if you guys don't fund, make sure and let us know if you guys do another campaign, you know, in the future and stuff like that. And we'd be more than happy to help you guys out and stuff like that, okay? Because it didn't look like a bad game, and I really want to try to play it on Tabletop Simulator, so. Yeah, once it's available, maybe we'll yeah. take a look at it and kind of can do a little mini follow-up or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. So Jason has been very communicative, I think, to backers. Uh, do you get scared from backing games from publishers with unfulfilled projects? I think it right now. It doesn't bother me unless it's something that's been unfulfilled for like two years or something with exactly. a bunch of complaints. Exactly. If it, if. And that's even then, there can be a rare exception. Like, we just got Quad Heroes, and I right. wouldn't be – and it took about two years, and, and I wouldn't be upset about backing their stuff again. I expect at least three months to six months to lay. Here's the thing, though. If you are super communicative then or I don't you feel communicate bad. to your audience – so Quad Heroes, although it was like a two-year endeavor for them – I swear they did, like, updates. I felt like it was weekly on that game for, like, two years. And I never felt like they weren't working on it. They were always providing updates. And because of that, I never had any bad feelings about that game, you know? Right. I was still a little nervous about, okay, am I ever actually going to get this game? But when it did get to me, I was like, oh, man, like, they did such a great job of, like, Fixing the situation that could have been really terrible and making it the best thing that they could out of that. So as long as people are communicative, like or they communicate to their audience about something being late, like I don't feel like there's any reason to. Right, we generally almost always have some cool mini or not thing backed, and it's not that they don't fulfill, but sometimes it takes a while to fulfill. So you're like, 
you know, stuff just, happens, guys. I'm kind of just used to it. I know that I'm going to get like five or ten games in the middle of June that I probably already forgot about. Right. Vincent says, don't get me started with Papillon, please. What's <laughs> Papillon? Is that like Papillon? <laughs> I've never heard of Papillon. I know. We all want Papillon. We do. <laughs> Papillon. Let's Rest see here. Peace. Too soon, guys. Too soon. So with this one, man, I'm I'm super sad it's not not how much time yet. does it have okay. left though i, I know that's know. asking you to scroll up which I is know. like the that's hardest. why we need to put we need to put that in the notes oh, oh my god now i'm, I'm not trouble. gonna i'm not gonna scroll up it's all your fault Just sir them in there. somebody I else can i'm look. interested yeah. in this one though complexity i want to back this one i'm interested in the gameplay it looks like it's going to be a fun game to play i like the idea of it comes with really good stuff already like just at the re at the regular version um, the only thing I wish is that the deluxe version is the one that comes with the game tray. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh, oh it game says trays. game trays on the box, but that's only the deluxe version. Game trays are expensive, though. so They are. But I was just sad because I, was, drive, I thought it came with it. Right, but it would drive the price up so, up so much that that's not the first thing that you want people to see when the Don't you put have it on your, your box campaign. Then. They put it on the on, – so on the trailer, the very first video, it's on there. And so I assume that meant it came with everything, all of them, but it doesn't. Well, maybe they're doing their final production copies or their final, you know, retail copies with game trays at a higher price maybe. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just saying. I felt, like, disappointed. I was like, oh, Oh, no, that's I'm Kickstarter Limited for the game I trays. I was just disappointed that I'm not going to get that. That you're not going to get them? Yeah. I mean, we would have to get them with the game trays. If we back this, we would definitely. Oh, get it's the game got trays. 16 days left. It's got like a lot of time. I wish this one was funded already, though. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Rusty Industries is not funded. I'm surprised this one's not funded. Yeah. But like I said, they're both in that middle market, and it's really tough right now. It seems like the they're ones that are all around that pr same price, right? The ones that are getting funded are like twenty dollars or less and a hundred dollars. Thirty-eight and thirty-nine. It seems like those the extreme ends are the ones that are getting funded easily, where. The ones in the middle are really struggling right now, and I don't it's know. If so it's much competition. You have to make. You have to check every fatigue. single box. So here's something that, like, I, th I think about Kickstarter fatigue. Even my amount of excitement that I get over Kickstarter has dramatically changed and dropped from when we first started doing this. Because over three years, we've backed a lot of stuff. So now it takes a lot more to wow me to get that adrenaline pumping. Like, oh my gosh, what is this? I'm so excited for this. Well, and, and if you imagine these super backers have been backing games for like five, ten, five, ten years, right. their collections are getting full. They really need something to stand out. Otherwise, they're like, I've already got seven games like this that I haven't played. Hmm. Or even if they have played, I've got eight other games like this or whatever. It gets harder and harder the longer Kickstarter has been open and active because people have seen really big, really good, really well-ran campaigns that you don't want to go backwards. Right. And when you've been backing Kickstarters for so long, long you have a finer eye with things you know yeah. because there's plenty of kickstarter campaigns that i've backed in the past that when i finally got the game i was like dang it this game is no good <laughs> <laughs> wasn't exactly what you thought it was right it wasn't exactly what i thought it was they gave me the wow factor they gave me the things that i wanted from it but then like you know i learned for for what else i could look for in yeah. a campaign because of that but not as many of those are squeaking through anymore, though, because people are have finer eyes with those things. So if you don't check every single well, box and, and that, and that's and there's it. just a glut too. There's a lot of games out, so like yeah. you really have to stand out. Yeah, I've well, and well, that's easier said than done with anything. The Kickstarter's not new now. You're from not what you've seen right now, would you back this game, Doctor? This Lord one, yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah from what I've seen, one. I would back this game as well. It's gonna have amazing game trays. I love the pieces in it. I love tile laying games. I love the fact that you're putting these together to, like I said, to to get items, and then you're also having that second diplomat thing to get your victory points off of. So like. It's not just like a one scoring process. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Like you're laying down tiles and, and you're like, yay, like you I could, scored. No, right, you, have you, other, have, you have to do other things. You have big turns. Yeah. So that always is fun whenever you get to build up to these Ooh, really large yeah, turns. I know, you're right? Like, this does this, this like, does this, does this. And maybe this too, maybe once they get all of the streaming items done on here. Yep, that'll help. Then maybe their numbers will go up with that. Yeah, they're gonna, I mean, it's going to be on Board Game Spotlight. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff coming up. So. Yeah, I feel like there's a, there was a lot of little ones this week. That we looked at, and then coming up, there's a ton next week, too, that I've seen. As far as just, like, what we have in queue, I want to say, like, there's four or five that I just saw right off the bat that I'm like, all right, well, we're going to be researching these ones. That's fair. <laughs> On top of whatever else we find as we go through everything. So. And I'm actually, 
I think we're more in the market for those middle games at this I'm point. I'm wondering though. Because we've got a, lot, a bunch of hundred dollar games. And Origins a bunch of $20 is only games. in a few months. I mean, we have this month, and it's cool. Mini are not at the end of this month, and then right after that, it's Origins. So. Yeah, it's like two weeks after that. So that's I'm like surprised that's so like many. Weeks. I'm surprised we have so many of them popping up right around this Origins time because, like, you think they would debate. Deb I'm after? personally less apt to spend more money during this time, and maybe that's why a lot more little games are showing up. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We should you ask know, everybody. We're gonna be really sad if we don't back Cool Mini or Not's game, and then we go to the Cool Mini or Not Expo, and then <laughs> we're like, dang it, this game. Yeah. We want this game. <laughs> that's what I mean, that's what always happens. Like, every time I see the others, I'm like, why didn't we back this? But <gasps> at the time, we just didn't want to drop the money on it, so. The Obsidian Tower next week. All right. Well, I'll have to look at that one. I know I take pictures of them on my phone as I'm going through things, and I have them all saved because I, I can never mm. remember all of the names of all of the ones that I'm looking at for the next week. If only there was a Facebook page where I could see upcoming Kickstarter news. I don't know uh, of anything like that. Yeah, yeah there yeah, just isn't I don't any. know. Hmm. Yeah. Well. What a shame. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to say. That would be a hell of a tabletop party, wouldn't it? I, that would be a hell of a tabletop party. Yeah. Like a tabletop backer party. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, yeah, I, I would totally back com Complex City. So we have Kingswood and Complex City. Those are the ones we're backing. This week. Yeah, like, whew. Lost Industry, just need more information. Like, I want to play that one first. Yeah. But I could see picking it up if it, the gameplay matches what I think it's going to be. And then Bloodborne is one that we're going to pass on, but probably regret later. Probably regret. I have a feeling we are. Especially we're going to see it's like it Tainted like Grail. Like, you know, st I'm, uh, every time I see something about it, I'm like, oh, there's so much <laughs> Kickstarter exclusive <laughs> stuff. Uh. And thank you for all of our Ko-Fi supporters out there as well. You guys are amazing. And we appreciate you guys giving us funds to help us produce all of this. We had gotten those wireless mics, which I'm going to be using at the Cool Many or Not Expo and at Origins and at Gen Con this year. And hopefully maybe PAX Unplugged. We'll see. I want to do PAX Unplugged real bad, guys. Like, that would be amazing to be able to make it out to the East Coast. I haven't been out there a whole bunch. Yeah. So. And plus, like, it's a smaller convention that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So that's exciting as I well. I think the farthest back East I've gone for games has been Texas. Yeah, for me, Texas yeah, is the farthest I've yeah. gone. But if you guys are at Cool Mini or Not Expo, make sure to s stop by and say hi. We are actually going to be doing live hosting for Cool Mini or Not on their panels. So all of the panels that you're going to see for Cool Mini or Not are going to be hosted by us, which is really exciting. I'm so excited to be doing that. Like, it's, it's going to be amazing, guys. I can't even tell you. I don't want to discuss all the details with you guys, but I'm super excited about doing it because I feel like we're going to do a bunch of cool and new things that other people have not done before with the panels, and we're going to make it very exciting for you guys. We're going to be doing cool mini or not giveaways during those panels and stuff. It's going to be so awesome. And then cool mini or not has their expo as well as the UK uh, game expo as well. And they're actually going to send our stream over to the UK Game Expo as well and do giveaways over there. Yeah. So if you guys are excited about Cool Mini or Not stuff, I would make sure you sign up for their YouTube, their Instagram stuff, like all of their stuff, because they're going to be doing some awesome things. With And I'm excited to be a part of that. Like, I'm so excited, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up soon. I know. Other than that, thanks for everybody joining us. So East Coast where it would be a PAX Unplugged is in, what is it? Oh, I can't remember. It's going to be PAX Unplugged, though. It is on the super East Coast, though, like mid-East Coast. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't know. You don't remember? I don't right. remember. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate everybody who made comments and chat and everything. You guys are amazing. And I think that's about it, right? Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done. All right. Make sure and get some Chipotle this weekend because. Chipotle is my man, line. Like, they really, they need to be supporting us. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Hope. Let's see.